Hi everyone, welcome to today's class. In today's class, we are going to learn about dehydration. So, dehydration is also one of the processing method or preservation method in food processing. So, let's learn about dehydration. Yeah. So, dehydration is nothing but removal of water or you can term it as drying of a food product when you sometime okay dry a food product what happens is that the water content would be removed that uh, that is the water activity can be made very low so that uh, the microorganisms will find it difficult to grow in such a low moisture content okay so this drying okay it is one of the oldest method of preserving food so primitive societies, you know, they practice the drying of meat and fish in the sun long before recorded history. So that has been followed even okay in early ages of life also. This is also a very easy method. Now, why this is important? Because it's still an important method of preservation. It is maybe it, this may be low cost or this is easy to perform. So they say this is one of the best methods for preservation. So they also say that the dry foods can be stored uh, for a long period of time. The shelf life can also be very long and it can be kept without any kind of damage or deterioration. Now, okay, why this dehydration or drying is performed? Because I already said uh, to stop the growth of microorganisms. Why? What happens is that what is the mechanism behind is that many microorganisms are unable to grow or multiply, okay, uh, in low uh, low moisture content. So this would be a very good uh, very good point for us to preserve the food and increase the shelf life. The second point is that it is about the enzymes. So when you take uh, when you take an enzyme, okay, uh, which produces undesired change, what happens is that they won't be able to function without water. Water is also required for the function of an enzyme. So uh, when the water content is reduced, the enzyme's function can be stopped. All right. So they say that I already said that preservation is one of the principal reasons for drying, but this okay, process can also be performed with many other processes to bring down, bring out uh, very good results. Now, so what are the two important factors okay, in controlling the dehydration? One is nothing but the transfer of heat to provide the necessary latent heat of vaporization. What do you mean by latent heat of vaporization is nothing but it is also called as the enthalpy of vaporization where you give a particular energy to a liquid to convert into a gas okay energy required okay by liquid to form gas is called as what the latent heat of vaporization next process is that next factor is that uh, is that it talks about the movement of water or water will put to the material okay like when you heat a food it should be readily okay it should be readily evaporated so that movement of water is also uh, one of the important factors in dehydration now so this drying process falls into three categories what are the three categories they are nothing but air and contact drying under atmospheric pressure second one is a vacuum drying and the third one is a freeze drying now let's uh, learn them in detail. Air in contact drying under atmospheric pressure. This is very simple. Like you keep a food product, okay, and you pass hot air, okay, over the food product. So this can be done in two ways. Either you pass, okay, hot air directly into the food product, or you can, okay, you can keep something, okay, you can keep some contact surface where you provide heat to the contact surface. And when the food product comes in contact to the contact surface, okay, the food gets heated and drying happens and water vapor is removed. I think you're clear. I'll just, let me explain it once more. So, you have a food product and when you pass hot hair over it, okay, water vapor, okay, is removed and drying takes place. Another another format is that uh, the food product will be placed okay uh, in contact with the surface. So the hot hair will be supplied to the surface. 
what happens is that the, the surface okay gets heated and when the food comes in contact with the surface okay even the food gets heated and drying takes place now what is vacuum drying here i have some important points to uh tell you like you might get it in your examination they say that the this just look at it evaporation of water is more readily to occur at low pressure just mark this point okay evaporation okay of water occurs at low pressures okay occurs at low pressures so what is happening in vacuum drying or the principle behind this is that they would bring the pressure okay uh, they would bring the pressure of the product very low so that the evaporation of water takes place here, uh, one more thing also uh, very important is that the vacuum drying takes place either by conduction or radiation. Okay, two important uh, points to be noted down in vacuum drying is that evaporation of water takes place at very low pressure, and the second point is that uh, the heat transfer is mainly done. Okay, it's mainly done by what? conduction and radiation conduction and radiation okay vacuum drying it's nothing but conduction and radiation now what is freeze drying freeze drying is similar like you uh, you remove the water what happens is that there's one solid fluid okay the solid fluid turns toward the gaseous phase without passing through the liquid phase so this process is called as what sublimation okay just repeat after me it's nothing but sublimation when a solid turns to a gas without passing through the liquid phase is called as sublimation so here in freeze drying sublimation okay takes place what happened the solid food could be uh, subjected to a very uh, subjected to a temperature where the water vapor is removed or sublimed of the frozen food okay so you have to provide a particular temperature and pressure uh, for a for a proper sublimation to occur so now you have something called the conduction drying can you state an example for conduction drying we just learned it now that is nothing but a vacuum drying so conduction dry, uh, drying is nothing but okay this is also uh, this is also uh, followed in at contact drying also so this is nothing but uh, the food or uh, something any kind of product will be put into uh, contact with a surface so any okay any process that involves a contact surface which is okay which is preheated okay by hot air or something so it's called as what conduction drying so conduction drying always involves a surface okay in between what the heated air and the foot particle okay conduction drying will always have a surface now okay now we learn about the drying equipments so what do you know about the drying equipments there are various processes like uh, to remove the water vapor we have different dryers like the yeah, the tray dryer the drum dryer the spray dryer the tunnel dryer and the fluidized bed dryer okay now we will learn about the tray dryer okay this is the uh, diagram okay of the tray dryer where you will have different plates okay many plates okay put inside the uh, tray dryer so you will okay you will just spread the food particles okay and i will just show you uh, just follow my thing so these are the plates okay so uh, the food particles are evenly spread over these plates and when okay hot air passes okay through the tray dryer the food gets dried okay the food gets dry so this is uh, uh this is only uh, the process involved in tray dryer so these trays you know they would be perforated trays so that they can ease okay the process of drying and um, this is mainly used for what the small scale production and it involves a low capital and maintenance cost yeah so uh and 
They say that there's a relatively poor control and produce more variable product quality as food dries more rapidly on trays nearest to the heat source. So what they say is that uh, the quality of the dried product will also be really good. I'll just repeat what is a tray dryer. You will have a lot of perforated uh, plates inside the tray dryer. So when hot air okay, is blown through a centrifugal fan, what happens is that uh, the food products on the tray gets dried. Okay, And they also say that it has a very low capital cost and this uh, it has a low maintenance and the product quality is also now we'll talk about the tunnel dryer what do you mean by tunnel dryer so tunnel dryer here what they do is that uh, they will stack okay plates over a truck okay? uh, the plates will be filled with uh, food materials so when i say the plates are filled with food materials or spread with food materials they have to be evenly spread okay they have to be evenly spread so when uh, what happens when the food materials okay when the plate stacks okay uh, when the stacks are passed through a tunnel hot air will pass through them and the food product will be dried okay food product will dry so this is the direction of the airflow so these are the trucks and the trucks would have plates which contain the food particles so when okay when hot air flows through them okay when hot air flows through them okay the food product gets dried okay uh, so here in tunnel dryer uh, we have okay we have uh, three types of airflow one is the parallel or co-current type another one is a counter current and the third one is the cross flow so uh, yeah so let me tell you let me tell you about the parallel counter current and the cross flow they're very simple like uh, they'll have a rapid initial drying the counter current is more economical and the cross flow when you talk about cross flow they have uniform drying so the next type is a drum dryer so drum dryer is nothing but uh, here the heat is supplied by what conduction okay so uh, heat is supplied by conduction that is very important and the second thing is that the thermal efficiency is really high okay the thermal efficiency is what it is really high and and it is also carried out this heating process is also carried out in the absence of okay, in the absence of what oxygen okay uh, these are very important okay important point there is no oxygen present when you dry a food product in a drum dryer it usually takes place through conduction and the thermal efficiency is really high and the next point is that the heat consumption is really less like 2000 to 3000 kilojoule per kg and one more thing is that uh, the the time taken okay to complete one revolution always ranges between 20 seconds to three minutes okay 20 seconds to three minutes the heat consumption is really less so it is about what 2000 okay 2000 okay 2000 to 3000 and the time limit for one revolution is the what 20 seconds to 3 minutes 20 seconds 20 seconds through 3 minutes next fluidized bed dryer which is also very simple so you could see the foot particles are suspended against the cavity so the cavity will always be in the downward direction here what they do is that they supply hot hair to keep the food particles suspended okay against the gravity okay if your gravity is this way the food particles okay are suspended this way so this happens because of the hot hair so what happens okay when you supply hot hair uh, against the gravity uh, the water vapor in the food particle will be removed and drying takes place so that's about fluidized bed dryer. The next one is the um, spray dryer. So what happens in a spray dryer is that, okay, uh, 
it is very simple like uh, it involves atomization droplet admixing evaporation and recovery of dry product okay when a liquid food product is uh, is fed into the spray dryer atomization takes place that is nothing but fine droplets okay uh, fine droplets are formed okay now uh, inside the spray dryer, there would be a hot air supply. So when the top lids, okay, come into contact with the hot air supply, evaporation takes place. So when evaporation takes place, the dry products are formed. What is the first step? First step is nothing but atomization. Okay, first step is atomization. Second step is mixing hot water i mean hot air with the droplet and the third step is evaporation and the fourth step is that you recover the dry products yeah so yeah that's all about the spray dryer i forgot to say one thing in fluidized bed dryer okay in fluidized bed dryer uh the heat transfer is mostly by convection okay just have a note of it in fluidized bed dryer the heat transfer is mostly by convection so that's all with today's class so thanks for watching and do learn do likes share and subscribe